Welcome, 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 everybody, to another episode of Fantasy News. I am your disheveled goblin host, Daniel Green, and today I'm hoping I'm bringing that ray of sunshine energy straight on into your living room or commute or however you're consuming the fantasy news. And today we're going to go ahead and kick it off on the most positive note of all, that of the cover reveal because we have seen two sensational covers drop. The first from Zamil Akhtar, who dropped the cover for Elder Epic. And this, any other day, would be a clear runaway winner for best cover. I love the colors, the massive creature in the back, sensational looking, very on brand for Eldritch Horror type stuff. And it definitely instills a sense of scope and weight. But we also got the release for the cover of Jade Shards by Fonda Lee, delivered by Patrick Leo. I love seeing that guy be able to post covers. I don't know, it makes me happy. And the emotion in this one with the older faces and the usage of Jade is also like very on brand for the series. Shout out to the cover artist, Cheris Loke. And we are getting a new illustrated edition of The Hobbit to complete the recent set of Lord of the Rings and Silmarillion that has been put forth by Harper Collins. I have one of the Lord of the Rings of this series, and it's a pretty damn good value with how much you get in there. So if you are looking to really treat yourself, I think this could be worth it, especially if you want to collect them all. And we got a Jim Butcher update. Apparently the Olympian Affair has been sent off to Jim Butcher's editor and first chapter of the next Dresden is complete. An ETA on finishing it is in about 16 to 18 weeks. And that has been your Jim Butcher update. But in the first, bulkier story of the day, I want to go ahead and talk about Mike Flanagan's recent comments on his hope for the upcoming Dark Tower adaptation he is working on. Mike Flanagan has adapted two previous Stephen King works, Gerald's Game and the sequel to The Shining, Doctor Sleep. By the way, if you only ever saw a theatrical cut of Doctor Sleep, the director's cut, way better. But now he has been given the rights to take on the Dark Tower, the beating heart of the Stephen King universe. And he wants to bring in connections to his previous Stephen King adaptations already. For those of you unaware, which there should shouldn't be too many of you out there, Stephen King's books are connected and have been in a Cosmerian-ish kind of way, leaving little Easter eggs to show you that the same world that Pennywise is existing in is the same world that 112263 is happening in. That one's a little less subtle though. And Mike Flanagan has been a vocal Stephen King mega fan for his entire public career. And I love the idea of someone like him who is getting Dark Tower as such a passion project, gaining the ability to interweave the wider Stephen King universe into the Dark Tower adaptation as it should be done because it's there in the text. Of course, though, there are some rights issues that could come about. I'm hoping we can see some form of skirt around to make the references loose enough where you're not necessarily violating that. Though with those stories appearing in Dark Tower canonically as they do, it makes you wonder if that even would be violating some form of right because they're connected inherently. I actually don't know. This is why you shouldn't trust me for all the legal stuff here. I'm not a lawyer. And this isn't even the first time he's expressed interest in adapting the whole Stephen King universe appeal. But his exact quote for this article starts, The thing about the King universe is, it's all connected, and the nexus point of these connections is the Dark Tower. In the Dark Tower universe, there are all these other characters in the King world that come into play in different ways. When you make changes to the source material to introduce characters who could have played a very important role in that story, Doctor Sleep was written after the Dark Tower was finished. Abra Stone in the Dark Tower universe as a breaker is really interesting he says. There is a character in the Dark Tower named Dandello, who I think is a cousin of the True Knot, who's this emotional vampire, but who feeds on laughter instead of fear. But there's room in that world for the True Knot themselves. There's room for Rose the Hat. There might be room for Danny Torrance. There's all kinds of stuff that could be amazing if we're able to get that property on its feet. There's ways to pull in other things from the King universe. And I think the Shining verse, the Doctor Sleep universe, could very seriously dovetail into it, especially since in our movie, Dick Holleran at all but points to the Dark Tower in his last scene with Dan. So if I'm reading that right, it seems that he even wants to go further than the King universe is established and add in additional crossovers, which of course is dangerous territory, but with the guy behind Midnight Mass, it's one of the few instances where I can kind of be like, I'm going to be skeptical, but also really hopeful. 
I think one of the reasons I'm most excited about Mike Flanagan getting his hands in the Dark Tower is it is a series that very heavily relies on theme for its overall narrative message and ending to land with the reader. And so I'm actually not as afraid as I would be with some other franchises in terms of seeing, you know, changes made to the source material as long as the person who makes those changes truly understands the themes of Dark Tower and is doing so not in some attempt to make it more appealing to a wider audience or bend the knee to studio, but instead is saying, I have access to these characters and I can weave them in a way thematically that makes sense to possibly make up for other characters I wouldn't be able to get my hands on that should be there. That all doesn't sound terrible. Of course, as a big Dark Tower fan and as someone who's been paying attention to fantasy for the last 10 years, I'm skeptical. But if there's someone who can bring in a ray of hope, it's that beautiful, beautiful Mike Flanagan. Now I have one quick message for Wraith Marked, my publisher. I saw that you've started working with Travis Baldry on these enamel pins. I was your big shot author grab. Where's my enamel pen? Apparently there's going to be a Kickstarter coming down the road for these and... Bryce, where's my f And we've gotten the final cover reveal of the day, which is going to be Cassiel's Servant by Jacqueline Carey. And this one, I prefer the other style for Jacqueline Carey covers a little bit, but I don't hate this one. It's still nice. And I'm also just a really big fan of the artist for this cover's overall style. If you're interested in cover artists, go check out their portfolio. It's really impressive. Melanie Dolan, I hope I'm saying that right. You're very impressive. And for those of you who just like keeping up with just cool things going on in the fantasy space, there is a YouTube channel that is just now starting up and gaining really impressive traction that is hosting full audiobooks here on YouTube with permission from the author. And you just go watch and they're even putting up reports of how much money they're making, the views they're gathering. It's pretty neat. I don't know them personally or very well, but it's just if you're looking for a space to pick up free audiobooks, it seems mostly from the indie scene, no harm in checking it out. And I need to ask, do you like thick lizards? because Godzilla, is, that's the transition I'm using, you can't stop me. That's because Godzilla's first ever novelization is finally getting an English translation and being published by, according to Amazon, University of Minnesota Press? All right. And I must say, if this is like a lot of franchise universes that just get novelizations, I'm not that interested. But if I hear it's exceptionally well written, I could be because the idea of a fantasy book written about Godzilla seems like it could do a lot of stuff with the slower pacing and more room you can get narratively when you're not constrained to a movie and do something with a novel. Really add to the atmosphere and presence of Godzilla. Let your imagination go wild instead of being limited to what VFX or, you know, prosthetics as they did in the older stuff can do. Not prosthetics, sorry. A big suit with Guy in. And of course we got casting for the next season of Rings of Power, with the three named actors being Kyrian Hines, Rory Kinnear, and Tanya Moody. I had my heavy criticisms, heavy criticisms, of season one of Rings of Power, but I do want to give their casting department a compliment. They're very good at finding actors with interesting eyes. I'm not a serial killer. <laughs> And do you like chainsaws attached to guns? Well, then you might be a Gears of War fan and interested to hear that one of the writers from Dune and Doctor Strange, John Spates, has been brought on board the adaptation that is in the works over at Netflix of Gears of War. Not too much is known about this movie aside from Dave Bautista's situation, but I do look forward to getting trashed with some friends and watching some chainsaw guns be used on aliens. That just sounds like a good time. I'm not expecting high art, but I'm expecting something that'll make me go, yeah! And in the final story of the day, we are getting new bookends for Berserk, and they look... Why in the hell you would decide to make Berserk bookends that are not just Guts's sword? I have absolutely no idea, because that is 100% the best bookend idea you could come forth from the Berserk franchise franchise with, but on top of that, the decision to make it on one end Guts and the other end Griffith could kind of work if you took a super minimalist and like pulled back dramatic angle to it, but instead they've decided to have cheap looking plasticky materials. This looks like the same material you would put for Funko Pops and then just put a very standard head of Griffith on there. That's not impressing me much at all. And then they jump over to Guts, who they've decided to make the bangs just the least attractive they've ever looked by a mile. Include the sword a little bit just so you know how good this could have been if you just bought the Berserk Dragon Slayer bookends and then made him smile. 
which is somehow unsettling. But this has just been your latest episode of Fantasy News. Like and subscribe if you have not already and hit the Patreon if you like support what I do here. Have a good one, y'all. I got books, I got merch. Peace.